What's going on? Benji Kaiser here today talking about the best Photoshop and Lightroom laptop. So what are the specs that you need? What are some of the recommendations I have? And what are some tips to pick out the best laptop for your needs in Photoshop or Lightroom? That all is coming at you right now. All right, before we dive fully into this video, if you are curious about the exact models I'm speaking of during this video, you can head down into the description below and grab a link to the video to check the exact specs and pricing for any of those models. Now those are affiliate links, so if you do use those links, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps these videos coming out and this channel alive. So I appreciate it when y'all use those links. All right, so the first thing I wanna dive into is really just talking about the performance and the experience of the machine. And overall, that's really what this video is gonna fully focus on because that's what you're looking for. You wanna know, do I have the performance I need and do I have the quality I need in order to make a good Photoshop laptop? Well, the performance is really key when it comes to Photoshop. Photoshop is one of the more powerful basic graphic design tools. So you have really the trifecta. You have Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator. Well, Photoshop is gonna be pulling the most power. It just takes a lot to run that program. And so for me, I always recommend people having at least an i5 processor. The i5 processor is capable of handling Photoshop and tasks surrounding Photoshop. So for instance, if you're browsing the web, you're also on Photoshop and you're listening to music at the same time, you're gonna have the power you need. Now, if you wanna upgrade that so you can kind of future-proof yourself, the i7 is a great bet. It's gonna be a little bit more money, but it's gonna give you a little bit more power. So in case you ever wanna branch out into running Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator at the same time, um, you would don't have to worry about bogging down your computer. It'll be able to handle that. Now, to complement that i5 or i7 processor, I always recommend at least eight gigs of RAM, but I lean people towards 16 gigs because what happens is if you start running more than one program at a time, you end up pulling more and more random access memory as you run more programs. So say for instance, you have a couple web browser windows open, you're listening to music, you're in Photoshop, and then you need something, you know, some vector work done in Illustrator. Well, you're pulling RAM and also and your computer's bogging down if you don't have enough RAM to go around to all the programs. And so that's why I say 16 grams, yay, even 32 is the way to go. But I know that a lot of you are on a budget. And so again, below this video, I've listed a few different models uh, for different budgets and different specifications. So you can definitely go down and check those out. All right, the next thing that I often get asked is, do I need a good or a, an amazing graphics processing unit in Photoshop? I mean, I'm working with graphics, Shouldn't that relate? Shouldn't that make a difference? Well, it really doesn't. Uh, the graphics processing unit is more for video playback. It's more for rendering uh, files within say Premiere Pro um, or Final Cut Pro if you're using Mac. So that's something that you have to look at if you're doing that. But if you're simply in Photoshop, the integrated Intel uh, 620 graphics processing unit, for instance, is totally enough for your needs as a Photoshop photo editor, graphic designer, whatever you wanna say. Um, so the graphics processing unit isn't a huge concern. Now, if you may be getting into motion design in the future, you might wanna future-proof yourself there and check out my video for the best photo editing and the best video editing laptop. And I make some recommendations on the com combination between those two skill sets. All right, the next thing I wanna look at is the hard drive. So solid state hard drive versus hard disk drive. What do you need for Photoshop? Um, and I, always push people towards the solid state hard drive. It's newer technology, it's faster, it's more reliable. Um, so you're gonna get far better performance out of the solid state hard drive than you will the hard disk drive. The hard disk drive has moving parts where the solid state hard drive does not. This helps you with read and write speeds, this helps you with application load times, um, and just overall gives you better performance for your machine. All right, so now something that is very important to photo editors and people working in Photoshop is I would say the color accuracy as well as the screen size. Um, and a lot of times you see computers with bigger screens and people get concerned about the size of the computer as you grow the screen size. Well, there's a computer that I really like the look of. It's the LG Gram. It's a 17 inch computer, but it's only weighs about three pounds. And so that is fantastic for screen size. Um, so you could take that computer on location, be proofing your photos right there, uh, working in Photoshop, making sure all your colors are correct and uh, be on location, checking out your photos and making sure you're doing the work you need to be doing. So I think that is fantastic. It kind of marries both worlds, light, fast, and 
big. Um, so that's a pretty cool model. You can check that out in the description below. Now, color accuracy. Color accuracy is a really cool thing. I'll break it down simply. Now, your screen can see a certain range of RGB colors. Um, I like to just see the simple range from you know zero to 100. Um, so if your computer is seeing 100% RGB, that is a very color accurate, very good screen. Uh, some screens that I recommend could be down into the low to mid to high 90s. Still excellent screens, it just isn't getting you that 100%. It depends on what performance you want mixed with your color accuracy. So that's why I list quite a few options in the description below. All right, so that kind of gives you a good overview on the best Photoshop computer. If you have any specific questions, please don't hesitate to reach out in the comments below. I wanted to give you guys a good solid brief overview. Didn't want to take too much of your time. And so I appreciate you watching this video. My name is Benji Kaiser of BenjiKaiser.com and I'll see you here on the next episode.